Hans von Spakowski joins me now, who's a senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation. He was on the Presidential Advisory Commission on Election Integrity, and we ought to spend some time another night talking about that Time Magazine article that I mentioned earlier. Hans, welcome back to the program. And let me ask you straight out, is Donald Trump private citizen now going to have his uh, civil rights violated in this trial? Uh, Yeah, I think so. Uh, In fact, I think that what the Senate is doing violates two different provisions of the Constitution. First of all, uh, no matter what you may be hearing some folks claim, the impeachment clause only applies to current federal officers of the U.S. government. It does not apply to private citizens. If it did, then it would give the Senate the ability to decide – you know, some candidates running for president, they don't like what he's done. They 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 decide to um, hold, impeach him and hold a trial to bar him from holding uh, future federal office uh, to make sure he can't run for president or or any or, or be appointed to any other kind of position. It just doesn't make any sense. And second, um, Lars, there's a there's a provision in the Constitution that most people have no idea what it means. It's called the Bill of Attainder Clause. And I think we've far, talked about it, haven't we? Because this yeah, was an idea yeah. in Great Britain where the 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 uh, Parliament could impeach any citizen in Great Britain. Am I right about that? That is exactly right. And and Parliament used that. They would hold trials in Parliament. They would pass bills finding private citizens guilty of wrongdoing and punishing them uh, without by basically bypassing the judicial process. And that was uh, something that our framers, the Constitution, were well aware of and thought was fundamentally unfair. And so they barred that. The Senate cannot uh, cannot punish a private individual in a bill or or any other way. And that's exactly what they're doing right now with this impeachment trial, are trying to do for someone who is now a private citizen. Because this thing that the Democrats seem so bent on getting is barring Donald Trump from running for public office, which makes should make people immediately suspicious. Why are you so worried if you think this guy is so ruined by what has just happened? Two impeachments and now a second trial that's almost certain in an acquittal. Uh, if you think he's so ruined... Why are you so bound and determined to try to get a bar on him running for office? Well, the fact is, I think they're afraid of him politically. And and there are ways to bar somebody from office. I mean, a conventional way would be there are certain offices you can't seek if you're a convicted felon. Okay, you're a convicted felon. So if you've committed a crime and you're accused and put on trial and convicted and you lose all your appeals, well, then the felony conviction locks you out. But they don't have anything like that for Donald Trump, do they? No, they don't. And in fact, um, look, a president, once he leaves office, is subject to you know prosecution by state yeah. prosecutors, federal prosecutors, et cetera. Um, but there's no way, there's no prosecutor that would take, uh, would, that would launch a federal prosecution of Donald Trump for violation of the federal insurrection clause because uh, there's no way they could win the case. The elements of that uh, that crime are simply not met by what occurred um, on January 6th. So there's no way they could win a federal prosecution. So their way of doing it is with a show trial, apparently, in the U.S. Senate. Now, what I don't understand is this, Hans. Uh, apparently, McConnell has signed off on the idea that neither side will call witnesses. Well, why not? I mean, why would and, – and does Donald Trump or does his legal team have any say in this, saying, you've accused our client of something, he's now a private citizen – under due process, he has a right to confront his accusers, and he has a right to call witnesses on his own behalf. You're now saying, no, we're not going to do that. We're not giving him due process because, for a couple of examples, one, he could call somebody from the FBI, uh, the agency that came up two or three days after the uh, riot on Capitol Hill, and said, this has been in the planning stages for weeks or months. It's been planned extensively by people who have no direct
direct connection to President Trump at all. So they were apparently planning to do the things they did long before Donald Trump got up on that pod- up in front of that podium and started giving a speech. Well, that belies the, you know, the, the impeachment accusation itself. You gave a speech, incited a riot, bad things happened. No, it was already going to happen, and in fact, it had started happening. The riot had started before the president ever got done with his speech a mile away from the Capitol. So they could call those kinds of witnesses. How is it that we're seeing McConnell sign off on the idea that Donald Trump and his team don't get to call any witnesses at all? Well, I'm I'm assuming that he wants to get this over with as quickly as possible, and witnesses would probably delay it. I I think part of what's happening here is the lawyers uh, for Donald Trump are making the argument, uh, as we just discussed, that this is invalid from the get-go, and uh, look, in a federal, in a court of law, in a criminal case, everything you've just said is is true. You, you have the right. right to due process and all that. But in the U.S. Senate, when it comes to an impeachment trial, uh, none of those protections apply. The rules are whatever the Senate decides they should be. So it can be conviction first and evidence second, like the Queen of Hearts. We're going we're going by Queen of Hearts rules now. Well, it could be, but uh, I, I assume that, uh, again, that President Trump's lawyers will will put on a pretty strong case. Uh, and I don't think I just don't think the Democrats have the votes uh, to to get a conviction. And at this point, they need 67 votes. And you and I have talked about this before, and I've had a few audience members push back. I said, look, it takes 67 to convict. Then it takes a second vote of 67 to get a bar on running for office for the rest of your life. And they said, no, it only takes a majority because the Constitution is a bit vague on the second vote. Or is it? No, it is not vague. It's all uh, it's all the same. Uh, It's it. uh, No, it's very clear. It takes a two thirds vote to convict and a two thirds vote to bar from future office. It is not a majority vote. And they're not going to get either one of those. At this point, I think the Washington Post has it counted up. They're about 12 votes short of that, aren't they? Yes, they are. So it, it's just not going to happen. Thanks for watching the Heritage Foundation's YouTube channel. With more than half a million members, we are the nation's largest conservative research and education institution. We believe the principles and ideas of the American founding are worth conserving and renewing. Please help us further our mission by subscribing to this channel and sharing our videos with your family and friends.